robbing Elohim. Because I, Yahuwah, do not change. You descendants of Jacob have not been destroyed. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statues and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says Yahuwah of hosts. But you ask, how can we return? Will a man rob Elohim? Yet you are robbing me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. Yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full tide into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says you of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessing without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your land and the vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit, says you of hosts. Then all the nations will call you blessed. For you will be a land of the light, says Yahuwah of hosts. Malachi 3.10 Bring all the tithes, the whole tithe, not merely a portion of it. Elohim is not served with partial service. The storehouse. The tithes were brought to the temple and laid up in the chambers built to receive them. Nehemiah 10, verses 38 and 39. A priest of Aaron's line is to accompany the Levites when they collect the tenth. And the Levites are to bring a tenth of these tithes to the storehouse, storerooms of the treasury in the house of our Elohim. For the Israelites and the Levites are to bring the contributions of grain, new wine, and oil to the storehouses where the articles of the sanctuary are kept and where the ministering priests the gatekeepers, and the singers stay. Thus, we will not neglect the house of our Elohim. In Nehemiah 13, verses 5, through 14. And had prepared for to buy a large room where they had previously stored the grain offerings, the frankincense, the temple articles, and the tithe of grain, new wine, and oil prescribed for the Levites, singers, and gatekeepers, along with the contributions of the priests. Tithes restored. Also learn, I also learned that because the portions for the Levites had not been given to them, all the Levites and singles responsible for performing the service had gone back to their own fields. So I rebuked the officials and asked, Why has the house of Elohim been neglected? Then I gathered the Levites and singers together and stationed them at their post. And all Judah brought a tenth of the grain, new wine, and oil into the storehouses. I appointed as treasurers over the storehouse Shilomiah the priest, Sadok the scribe, and Padiah of the Levites with Hanan son of Zachar, the son of Mad. Mad to assist them because they were considered trustworthy. They were responsible for distributing these supplies to their fellow Levites. Remember me for this, O my Elohim, 
and do not blot out my deeds of love and devotion for the house of my Elohim and for its services. Second Chronicles 31 11 through 20. Then Hezekiah commanded them to prepare storehouses in the house of Yahuwah, and they did so. And they faithfully brought in the contributions, tithes, and dedicated gifts. Coniah the Levite was the officer in charge of them, and his brother Shammai was second. Jehiel, Azaziel, Nahat, Azahel, Jeremoth, Josabab, Eliel, Ishmaqiah, Mahat, and Benaiah were overseers under the authority of Kaniah and his brother Shemaiah by appointment of King Hezekiah and of Azariah, the chief official of the house of Elohim. Kor, son of Imna the Levite, the keeper of the east gate, was in charge of the free will offerings given to Elohim, distributing the contributions to Yahuwah and the consecrated gifts under his authority, Eden, Mini, Nehemim, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amaria, and Shekaniah faithfully distributed portions to their fellow priests in their cities according to their divisions, old and young alike. In addition, they distributed portions to the males registered by genealogy who were three years of age or older, to all who would enter the house of Yahuwah for their daily duties for service and responsibilities of their divisions, and to the priests enrolled according to their families in the genealogy as well as to the Levites, 20 years of age or older, according to their duties and divisions. The, gene the genealogy included all the little ones, wives, sons and daughters, and the whole assembly, for they had faithfully consecrated themselves as holy. As for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, they lived in the farmlands around each of their cities or in any other city were designated by name to distribute a portion to every male among the priests and to every Levi listed by the genealogies. So this is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah. He did what was good and upright and true before Yahuwah, his Elohim. He was diligent in every work that he began in the service of the house of Elohim and in the law and the commandments in order to seek his Elohim. And so they prospered. That there may be meat in my house, our father said. Tithes, offerings, contributions, free will that often should be given, that there may be meat in my house, that they who minister about holy things may live of the things of the temple. Repeating, that they who minister about holy things may live of the things of the temple. 1 Corinthians 9 Through 30. Do you not know that those who work in the temple eat of its food, and those who serve at the altar partake of its offerings? In the same way, Yahuwah has prescribed that those who preach the good news should receive their living from the good news. But I have not used any of these rights, and I am not writing this to suggest that something be done for me, Paul said. Indeed, I would rather die than let anyone nullify my boast. Yet when I preach the good news, I have no reason to boast because I am obligated to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the good news. If my preaching is voluntary, I have a reward. But if it is not voluntary, I am still entrusted with a responsibility. What then is my reward? That in preaching the good news, I may offer it free of charge and so not use of my rights in preaching it.
Numbers 18. Numbers 18, 21 through 30. Behold, I have given to the leaf. Wait a minute. One moment. Behold, I have given to the Levites all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance in return for the work that they do, the service of the tent of meeting. Let me repeat that. Behold, I have given to the Levites all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance in return for the work they do, the service of the tent of meeting. No longer may the Israelites come near to the tent of meeting or they will incur guilt and die. The Levites are to perform the work of the tent of meeting, and they must bear their iniquity. This is a permanent statue for the generations to come. The Levites will not receive an inheritance among the Israelites, for I have given to the Levites as their inheritance the tithe that the Israelites present to Yahuwah as a contribution. That is why I told them that they would not receive an inheritance among the Israelites. And you instructed Moses, speak to the Levites and tell them, When you receive from the Israelites the tithe that I have given you as your inheritance, you must present part of it as an offering to Yahuwah, a tithe of the tithe. Your offering will be reckoned to you as grain from the threshing floor or juice from the wine press. So you are to present an offering to Yahuwah from all the tithes you receive from the Israelites. And from these you are to give Yahuwah's offering to Aaron the priest. You must present the offering due to Yahuwah from all the best of every gift, the holiest part of it. Therefore say to the Levites, when you have presented the best part, it will be reckoned to you as the produce of the threshing floor or wine press, and you and your households may eat the rest of it anywhere. It is the compensation for your work at the tent of meeting. Once you have presented the best part of it, you will not incur guilt because of it. But you must not defile the sacred offerings of the Israelites, or else you will die. Prove me now herewith. Do your part, perform your duties, and then see if I will not reward your obedience. Open you the windows of heaven. The expression implies not only the removal of drought by corporate showers of rain, but the diffusion of heavenly blessing in large abundance, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, or unto superabundance, until it suffice, until you say it is enough. Luke 12, 17-21 Then he told them a parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced in abundance. So he thought to himself, What shall I do since I have nowhere to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and will build bigger ones, and there I will store up all my grain and my goods. Then I will say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But Elohim said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be required of you. Then who will own what you have accumulated? This is how it will be for anyone who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich toward Elohim. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for giving me these scriptures to share about tithes, offerings, contributions to those that preach or teach the good news. Paul reminded us of this. Well, then Paul was all right. 
because his reward was that he was not taking anything. But he said, woe is me if I do not preach the good news. Well, I feel the same way. My son, who is also ministering to Father's people along with the family, we minister the good news to the people, and we look up to Elohim to supply all of our needs. We ask Father to forgive all of those people that knew to give but did not give. Have mercy, Father. Let this be a new time where it will be different and hearts will open by your anointing and people will give generously to help us in this great call that you have put on our lives, that we will be able to help those that are homeless, naked, and needing food to eat. Our storehouses right now are empty. Well, there have been few that have reached out. But we know, Father, and believe that your time has come to touch the heart of the people, to give into this calling. And I want to thank you for sustaining us and for sharing your word abroad by your Ruach HaKodesh. Oh, Father, it has been a great, great joy that I have been able to be used by you to reach out to your people not trying to do it for money's sake but to do it because i love you and because you have anointed me to do so i pray that you increase jobs finances and ways and means for which people can take care of their families and homes and everything. And Father, that we will share among ourselves to help each other. But this has to do with robbing you. And it has to do with the people you have set up to share the good news. Baruch Bobby Shem. Yahuwah, we love you with our whole heart, minds, and souls. Thank you for sustaining us and for those that you have had to be with us. Thank you for the ark that we have been in under your amazing care and presence. Thank you again for supplying all of our needs and for all the tests of faith, we thank you, Yah. Your will be done in your timing and in your season. It is your plan. Amen.